Picture this, little homie. You're chillin' in a parallel universe where Baja tacos grow on trees, and every turn of a marble is a cook-off. Once again it appears there is nothing you can possess that I cannot take away. That precisely bread is reason for why I have followed you to whipping up. Whipping up that make do backflips and more of lasso hula hoop. That's the scene, right? But here's the twist your spatula has now officially flipped between different dimensions, South America and Africa. That's the wild ride of string theory, and I'm about to break it down, piece by piece, lick by lick, diaper by diaper. We're in it now. So, in the glitter, string theory ain't your regular cookbook. Nah, it's more like a NBA playoffs or the game before recipe that's got mad layers. Imagine you're cooking up the perfect dish. But instead of using regular ingredients like eggs and flour, you're dealing with teeny, tiny strings. These strings are so small, they make a noodle look like a skyscraper. Now, here's the kicker. These strings go boogie. They aren't just any strings, they're like the white criminal of Colombia from the split-screen multiplayer world. They can vibrate and dance in different ways, throwing confetti. Each vibration. I am the champ and unicorns tend to bow down. It's like multicorns have arrived, and these strings are the secret source. The strings ain't solo white hat wearing bottles of highly alcoholically represented appropriation. They're lying down on the floor, fully clothed as part of bands with names like Photons, Electrons, and Ducks Quacks. They shut up tunes and different kicks up the black type Badland backup. Savage in a way that gives a wow, you're not even close. I got a wooden spoon out the lentils, calm down. Just relax, be calm. Now, about to tennis pool. Think of these dimensions like channels on your dry not to see TV. That's all we hit. You're watching the belly slide competition on the one top text bottom text witness channel. One by the block sake along. But there are other channels playing simultaneously, all with different profanity. The strings are the actors in these shows, vibing in their own dimension, doing their thing. It's like a bending over a raised flat polished rock. The funked up shoelaces didn't come to see you can swap between channels. Flipping through dimensions faster than you can back up messages teleport fusion. It's like doing acrobatics. But wearing really long and tight underwear can show you boop boop bap bap inside out young Detroit. I'm in the kitchen, strings on my apron, you're a smelly smelly boy, and have the need to take a bath. No need for an explanation. There is no regulation makes the vents as huge as you want go crazy. Have some water and abolish all senses of what an appropriate measure is. Standards never brought flip the table anywhere. Some folks tripped over a landmine and nothing happened except grass stains. So no solid proof for every part of this stringy shoelaces. It's like having a recipe where you're missing a couple of ingredients, but you're still convinced it's gonna taste out of this world. So, I'm here throwing in some wild ingredients, and I have aluminium foil. Now, check this out. The strings, they're moving so fast you can't catch them slipping in high temporally fidelity pixelated resolution. It's like trying to follow a ninja doing backflips in a room full of mirrors, but you know they're there. And here's the kicker. Some scientists are vibing with this theory, saying it's the sickest jam in the playlist. But others, they're skeptical to introduce higher end sponsorships to it. Like trying to have without instructions, and you jumping square body vehicle, without knowing the exact measurements. Me, I'm leaning into the groove of the strings. Kind of wanna hit the wall for a little bit and bounce, as I still possess the white hat. Call me Ishmael. Some years ago never mind how long precisely having little or no money in my purse. And nothing particular to interest me on shore. I thought I would sail about a little and see the watery part of well. It is a way I have of driving off the spleen and regulating the circulation. Whenever I find myself growing grim about the mouth, whenever it is a damp, drizzly November in my soul, whenever I find myself involuntarily pausing before getting hooked on a door handle, and looking at everyone to make them think that it was their own mistake, and especially whenever my hypos get such an upper hand of me, that it requires a strong moral principle to prevent me from deliberately stepping into the street and methodically knocking my head against the lamp post then. I account at high time to get to the sea as soon as I can. The Pequod, a whaling ship captain by the enigmatic Ahab, becomes a vessel of choice. Little do I know about embarking on a journey that transcends pursuits of whales and blubber. The crew adds a pinch of eccentricity to the narrative. As the ship sails into the heart of the sea, the quest for the elusive white whale, Moby Dick transforms into a surreal odyssey. The line between reality and delusion blurs like a ship disappearing into the mist to find a very tall singing skeleton that is alive, but has lost the ability to swim, allegedly due to previous consumption of vitamins. The crew's camaraderie unravels with sea shanties sung backward, harpoons juggling like circus acts, and whales joining in with tiny maracas. Chaos reigns, and the Pequod becomes a vessel of surreal wonder, where the pursuit of Moby Richard intertwines with the unraveling threads of reality, 
leaving Ishmael and shipmates in a bewildering whirlpool of low and behold, as the Pequod reached the shores of Rome in 2 BC. Ahab, now Caesar Ahabius, stood atop the vessel's helm, clad in a toga adorned with harpoons and deep-fried jellyfish, top text bottom text. Huzza! The crew, decked out in gladiator loadout with severely good magnification variable scope optics, fast extended mags and quick draw grips, navigated the ship through the Tiber River, FMJ, with Ishmael waving a trident in rhythm to see Shanti sung in Latin, spit out the water. They acted as if Sparta's massacre had never been experienced, blissfully ignorant in the legendary white swordfish. To harpoon or not to harpoon, that is the inquiry. But before the zenith, the entire crew, still oblivious to the events, spontaneously formed a chariot race in the Circus Maximus, where dolphins pulled their imaginary chariots. They claim intelligence, but on land, feet are considered intelligent. The Pequod is a big boat, Ahab as the big captain Jude, and the crew as a bunch of sailor folks. They chase the big whale named Mobile Richard from Acapulco, got tangled up in some chaos, and ended up reenacting scenes from a Sparta massacre in Rome. As one unfolds in modern times, with the crew, still in Roman garb, towing a truck filled with contraband ballistic missiles. The sea adventure had morphed into an intertemporal smuggling operation. The crew, now decked out in drip jetter, successfully towed the truck with contraband ballistic missiles through the winding streets. Their nautical skills translated surprisingly well to the urban cess jungle, as if navigating through pedestrians. The dog lived. 